I'm Claudia Catania, and you're listening to Playing On Air. You are about to hear Banshee, written and directed by John Patrick Shanley. It features Aidan Quinn and Geraldine Hughes. A man, seated at a table, is shivering a bit and blowing on his bowl of steaming hot soup. He attempts to sip it, but it's too hot. So he picks up the newspaper and starts to read when a beautiful girl, adorned with golden leaves, enters and looks at him. (coughs) Hello. Malcolm, is it? (coughs) What? Who are you? You silly man, you left your window open and here I am. But who are you? Genevieve's my name. You're sick? Yes. The flu. The flu. What's it like? Awful. What's in that bowl? Soup. <gasps> bowl of soup, hey? What's soup like? I repeat, who are you and how did you get in my house? I'm a banshee. A fairy, if you like. Huh? How did you do that? Make bubbles come from chicken soup. Who are you? I already told you. Be, be, be careful. Be careful. That's really hot. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Didn't that burn? No. Well, hey, you ate my soup. Aye, I did that. Am I having? Am I seeing things? Well, of course you're seeing things. Else what's the point of having eyes? Unless you're blind. And then how would you be reading the paper, Malcolm? Is this because of my fever? What do you mean? Are you a dream? No, I'm Genevieve. Let me see your hand. Oh! Ah! Stop that! Stop it! (laughs) Jesus! You bit me! Yes, I did. Why? Have a laugh. (laughs) Malcolm, I want you to give me a baby. What? What are you talking about? I don't have a baby. No, we'd make it. Wouldn't it be fun to have a little one? Are you insane? No. How do you do it anyway? Where did you come from? The fruit of the garden. You see those little rocks? Yes. I live in among them this last many years. I think I'd better phone a doctor. Oh, your hand is fine. It's not my hand. It concerns me. It's my mind. What's what's wrong with my phone? Won't work. Nothing works when I'm around. Except beauty, fate... Love and mischief. Look at your paper. What? It's gone blank. How did you do that? Enjoy it. No news is good. Have you ever been in love? No, yes. What did you do to my paper? Are you telling me you're not sure if you've been in love? People are often wrong about being in love. My head, I think I'm going to faint. No, you won't. How do you know? Because I say no. You shouldn't have drunk that soup. Why not? For one thing, it was too hot. And for another, you're going to catch what I have. I don't think so. You're wrong. I'm contagious. All right, let's attend to it. Your sickness, stand still. Let me kiss you. What? Don't. If you kiss me, you'll get infected. And anyway, what are you talking about, kissing me? I don't know you. Have you felt the rain on the wind just before night comes on? When? Ever. Sure. Then you know me. I'm with nature. And how did you come to be in my house? You left the window open. The window shut. Three days ago. You've been in my house for three days? On and off. I opened my window for a breeze, not some mad girl. I'm as welcome in your house as you are at the foot of my garden. Well, you're not welcome. I get to say who's welcome here, and you are not. Really? You want me to go? Yes. Some like to see me come. Life gets burdensome, and every child in the world wishes for magic. Well, I'm not a child. I'm a school teacher, and school teachers are distinctly different than children. How? We're civilized, grown-ups. Civilize me, then. I can't organize a puff of smoke. What are you talking about, smoke? I am not smoke. You're some kind of fantasy. Well, you can discipline a fantasy, can't you? How in the world would one do that? It's what life is, isn't it? 
dreams taken in hand and put to a purpose? What are the pyramids but a dream turned to stone? What's a king but the united will of his people? What's a banshee from the foot of a garden but your own child's dream made real? Enough of that. How are babies made? If you speak that well, surely you know the answer to your question. Remember, I've lived most of my life under a rock. How are babies made? You? No. I don't. Sex. What's that? Don't play stupid. I won't be your fool. What kind of teacher is it calls an honest question stupid? All right. I'll humor you. If you're a creature of nature, you must have noticed males going up on females. What about it? That's how it's done. How what's done? Babies. You're not serious. Are you saying the way a horse goes about it or a dog? That's the way a man makes a child? Yes. By the powers. You really didn't know. I can tell you this. A fairy would never do that. Why not? It's unpoetic. There's no dignity to it. Have you done that? Of course. There's no of course about it. You've carried on like a goat or a skunk or a pig with a woman. You've done that. If you want a baby, that's how it's done. No, it can't be. It's ungallant. That's what it is. I tell you this. It's not for the fairies. Fine. How did you think it happened? I thought you kissed and said pretty things and then you fell asleep and had a baby. Something like that. I thought it would be nice. It can be nice. It's not nice. People like it. Then people are beasts. We would never do something like that at the foot of the garden. Well, how do fairies make fairies? You get a big pot, and when the full moon shines in it, and the fog hides it, and spider webs cover it, and red candy is eaten, and incantations are recited, and night-blooming flowers cover the ground, magic happens, and a fairy is born. So do that. I don't want a fairy. I want a girl, or at least half a girl. What would the other half be? Me. And would name her Mary. Man and fairy mix a Mary. Why don't you want a fairy start to finish? Because I'm tired of being sad. I don't understand. The Banshees. We are the sad ones. We're a sad crew. And why is that? We foretell death. What? You left the window open, Malcolm. You may have caught your death. And do you tell me that you've never been in love? You mean this flu is serious? Mad serious and it's getting worse. It'll be raging by twilight. But I'm still young. You're not that young. I still thought I might marry. Marry who? Sitting here in your shawl like an old woman. I had a chill. There's a greater chill yet to come, isn't there? And there's my student. Oh, they'll bring in another teacher and your name will fade like spring. No, I won't have it. You won't have what? You ate my soup. That would have cured me. <coughs> it would take more than soup with that cough. You should have let me kiss you. We'll go with that, Adon. Do you think it's nothing, a fairy's kiss? It would have cured you. It would have brought you 30 good years. Do you mean it? A fairy's kiss is better than soup, I can tell you that. Then, then... Kiss me? No, nope, it's too late. Why not? You wanted to. That was then. You didn't. I feel rejected. I didn't understand. What's to understand? I wanted you, but you didn't want me. <laughs> I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. That's not why I'm crying. Then why? Oh, Jesus, I'm mourning your untimely death. Well, stop it. I can't. Why not? That's what banshees do. We weep to foretell death. And I'm weeping, Malcolm. I'm weeping. <clears throat> what was that? It stopped you crying. What did you do to my mouth? I kissed you. Why? Because I want to live. What kind of reason is that? A damn good one. I've never been kissed. How was it? Didn't like it. No? Don't think so. Think you did it wrong. I did Felt not. Felt like an accident, like you bumped into me with your lips. I did the best I could. Well, it was a sad piece of work, that's sure. Let me try. Mm. 
Mm. There. How is that? How do you feel? <laughs> what? How do you feel? <laughs> In what way? Are you still sick? No, I don't know. What did you say your name was? Genevieve. Genevieve. I don't know what to say. I've been looking for you all my life. You have? You have not. Everywhere. You didn't look at the foot of the garden. Marry me. You don't mean it easy now with that. That's a bit much. Marry me, Genevieve. And I'll give you the baby. Have you gone off your nut? We should make love. How's that done? Like I told you. By the powers, you mean you want to go up on me? Yes. Just like that, like a rabbit. Like a horse. I can't do that. It's disgusting. It's unnatural. Most natural thing in the world. Not for a fairy. Come to me. I guess you don't feel sick anymore. I feel like the night air and the moon. That's what it's like at the foot of the garden. Have you ever been in love? I don't know. Here's how you can tell. Nothing can stand in the way of it. And I don't think I've ever been, nor do I think I am now. You don't love me? No. Do you love me? Yes. Even though I don't love you? Yes. Look at my face. Forever. Forever? I swear it. Really? Then maybe I do love you. What changed your mind? That nothing seems to change yours. Mm. Mm. Mary. Man and fairy. It's a good name for a baby, don't you think? But you really have to. What? Do what you said. Go up on me. Not if you don't want. But would you still love me if I didn't? Yes. Look at my face. Forever. Well, then. Well, then maybe I might want you to go up on me. You'd consider it? Yes. Look at my face. I'm considering it. We can wait a while. Malcolm? Yes? Should I be worried? About what? Things that seem disgusting to me are starting to seem nice. Oh, Genevieve, it's fine. It's natural. It's human, isn't it? Yes. It's human. Welcome to the human race. You just heard Banshee... Written and directed by John Patrick Shanley. It featured Geraldine Hughes as Genevieve and as Malcolm, Aidan Quinn. We're here with John Patrick Shanley, the playwright of Banshee, Geraldine Hughes, who played Genevieve, and Aidan Quinn, who played Malcolm. Thank you all. John. Yes? Are Banshees big in Irish lore? I mean, how did this one come to insinuate herself into your story? New York City's teeming with Banshees. Uh, and uh, yes, most of them came from Ireland. Some of them came from Scotland. Uh, I've, I've always uh, liked the uh, the idea of the existence of this spirit as so uh, relentlessly mor uh, mournful because I thought, what do banshees do on their day off? Uh, and I thought with this premise, maybe I could investigate that a little. <laughs> Geraldine, you were born and brought up in Northern Ireland. When did you first hear of a, a banshee? Um, I've Well, I've heard of banshees my whole life growing up, but I actually heard a real banshee in 1996. Ooh. That's all I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Maybe that's all we want to know. That's all you want to know. <laughs> and they do foretell death. It was very scary. Ooh. I do believe in them. I do. And I think that anybody who's spiritual or connected to the land of Ireland will, will have heard them or, or believe in them. Absolutely. Aidan, you're of Irish stock. Any talk of banshees in your family or life? Yes, yes, without a doubt. Um, I th think I heard one in, uh, I was at the highest pub in Ireland, in uh, Kerry, 
and there was uh, in the Geltacht, and uh, there was this uh, unworldly shriek that came out of the deep bowels of <laughs> the woods that was. <laughs> Uh, it was really uh, uh, spine chilling, but you know, uh, when I was thirteen, we actually um, used to hang out in this old distillery in Burr County, Offaly, and um, I uh, started a thing. I pretended that I saw a banshee, and in a far window of a abandoned distillery, and one by one, all of my friends, over the course of hanging out, <laughs> saw it, right, mm -hmm. and. Well, then on the way home, I fessed up. And then one by one, every single one fessed up, except for the last boy that saw it over the course of a couple hours. And no matter how much we teased him, how much we berated him, he swore he saw it. And his aunt died mm. the next day. And he still, to this day, mm. swears he saw a banshee. Mm. That's really. <laughs> what did she look like? Wouldn't you know it's a she? It was something of uh, shrouded in a veil of a thing. It was just a quick, like a haunting, like thing. I didn't see her, but I heard her. Mm. And then I was staying in my sister's house and heard my sister's husband. The next morning, I said to them, I "Heard this noise," and I was terrified. And and um, his uncle, who was like a father to him, died that afternoon. And I was sleeping in their bed. Mm. So they come to the, the home of a relative of someone who's going to die or the person who's going to die. Yeah. Fun mm -hmm. stuff. Fun <laughs> stuff. So I wonder if there's the equivalent in other cultures. Well, the, the owl visitation in some native tribes and North mm. American tribes. is, is When the owl one. calls your the name. Omen, yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. There's all sorts of different mm. tribes have their different traditions. John, you periodically directed your own plays, like today, for instance. What do you like about directing your own work? What's especially good about it? Anything not so good about it? Well, you cut out the middleman. Uh, and uh, it's the great thing about directing your own play is you're directing your own play. And there's no, there's no obstacle in between you and the actors to uh, to overcome if another the director had a different vision or opinion about a given moment of the play. The bad thing is you can't leave. Uh, when somebody else is directing the play, you can wander out the door and come back uh, days later. For instance, right now I'm in rehearsal with the play, and I'm not there. I'm here, and that's kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all fixed when you get back. Yeah. That's great. Aiden and Jerry, when we asked if you'd be in the Shanley play, what came to mind at the thought of a Shanley play? What do the words Shanley play conjure up for you? Oh, gosh. Well, oh, he's just uh, such a fantastic playwright. I've, I've wanted to do so many of his plays over the years, and um, what I loved about this piece is that I didn't understand it completely at all, and that I knew it was just going to be a leap and I knew Geraldine's work, and I thought, oh, my God, to work with Geraldine would be just fun and great. And, and the words, and I love, uh, <clears throat> I love leaping off um, into something that's not uh, so psychologically, strictly realistic and all that crap. You know, it's fun uh, for an actor. We get to play. So we got to play. Yeah. I mean, you know, I don't know. I always think a mistake has been made when someone asked me to do anything. And then um, and then the second thought was, oh my God, when I found out um, he was going to be in the room as well, I got a bit frightened. And I thought, well, Aidan will be there, so that'll be fun. And then I knew he was frightened when I got here, and I thought, well, I'm in trouble now, because I'm just, <laughs> just going to be a complete sham, and it's going to be a disaster. So it's very Irish of me, just to be completely terrified and go to, you know, but it's been an extraordinary experience. It's been fantastic, privilege. And in that sense, it must be comforting to have the playwright be the director in oh, terms yeah. of putting you at ease. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And also, you know, to, you know, you'll come in and say something that makes complete sense if it's one word and it explains an entire notion on the page. Do you know what I mean? And then you trust that, of course, because he's written it. And so then it's immediate and it's yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Well, the terrible thing for an actor, if the playwright is there and they're not the director, is the director's talking and the 
actors looking over at the playwright once in a while thinking, yeah. he hates me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's better that the playwright talks or waves their arms and smiles or something, because if you just sit there and you don't do anything, they are certain that you hate them. <laughs> in, in Banshee, Malcolm is facing certain death. He says, I kissed you because I want to live. John, do you think a person needs to experience their mortality to embrace life fully? Um, I can't even begin to answer a question that good. I, but I would, I would say that having a knife to your throat always wakes you up. Yeah. And maybe, do you think a person does, in fact, die without love? There's plenty of people who die without love. Uh, it takes a certain amount of courage to go ahead and love and to go ahead and trust that you can show your true self to another person and be accepted or that they have the right not to accept you and have to have the guts to face the possibility that who you are is not lovable. I love the line that um, Geraldine says, I'm with nature. Mm. Gerard, I don't know if you loved saying it, but in what way does nature sustain any of you as artists? Well, we breathe, right? And we smell yeah. and we touch things and see things and live on this crazy planet. I mean, I mean, you can interpret that in so many ways, right? But I mean, certainly in this play, when when she says that, I feel like it's, you know, it's like the druid thing. You know, it's almost like we're all part. We're all the same. I think we're all the same anyway. So we're all nature. If that makes any sense whatsoever. But I think actors are nature. Uh, and, uh, you know, writers, directors, whatever, uh, call forth things out of them that they contain. But they're elemental creatures, and you have to respect the spirits that reside in them, the receptacles for many things. Malcolm asks, Genevieve, have you ever been in love? Here's how you can tell nothing can stand in the way of it. it seems like a pretty good definition of love, or passion at least. Is that a reasonable definition of art as well? Sure. I can live with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nothing can stand in the way of it, including you, yeah. the artist. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you got to get out of the way. Yeah. Genevieve also speaks of disciplining a fantasy, and it seems to me that's a pretty good definition of art. Uh, is writing for you more a flight of fancy or an act of discipline? Uh, it's it's many things, and I write many different ways. And in the vein that I'm in here, there's a there is some uh, fantastical poetic stuff going on. Uh, but uh, you know, I write in the way that serves the characters in a given piece. So the nuns in doubt talk differently than uh, Loretta does in Moonstruck, does differently than uh, uh, Malcolm and Genevieve in this. You just serve you serve the piece and see where you where you go. Banshee's burden, it seems, is knowing when death is on its way for others. That's why she says they're a sad crew, but at least they never die themselves. And the human's burden is, I suppose, they, they will die, but at least they never know <laughs> when it's about to happen. I thought to think of it, this is the Banshee's day off. In other words, everybody gets tired of crying. And if the Banshee's whole job is to cry and to tell people when they're going to die, then this is her going, you know what? I'm tired of being a Banshee. I'd like to move on and expand my knowledge of the world. And in this play, she does. So it's sort of the opposite of uh, a grieving or sad play. It's, it's really about embracing life while you have it. I'll ask you one more question, though, while I have you. What are you working on now, or what are you looking forward to working on? Uh, I'm doing a, a television series that takes an awful lot of my time right now. It's called Elementary, and it's on CBS. And I'm in rehearsal with a play called Outside Mullingar that I'm doing with Manhattan Theater Club uh, at the Samuel Friedman Theater on Broadway in January. I'm just doing a guest spots on television at the minute and also trying to get my um, screenplay made, which is moving forward, so that'll be exciting. Is that from your one-woman show? No, it's not. It's for, it's a different story. It's a little oh. romantic comedy set in Ireland. Um, okay. And, yeah, I'm excited about that. I'm also going to start a new series of short stories I'm going to read in February. And what about a series of short plays? 
Okay, well, Consider it. one step at a time. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. Yes, indeed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm a bit slow on the uptake. You could be in the control room and I'll be out here and you'll be yelling at me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you heard it here first. Going to write to you. Yeah, I, am, I am looking forward to the day. <laughs> uh. Thank you all. We've been talking with John Patrick Shanley, the playwright and director of Banshee, Geraldine Hughes, who played Genevieve, and Aidan Quinn, who played Malcolm. Thank you all. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. You've been listening to Playing on Air, great American short plays with great American actors. Original music by Tom Cochan. Recording and sound design by John Kilgore. Associate producer, Julia Weatherell. For more information about our artists and to listen to other short plays, check us out at playingonair.org and find us on Facebook and Twitter. For Playing on Air, I'm series producer and host, Claudia Catania. <laughs>